To do work, we need energy. To put it simply, energy is a stored capability to do work. For example, energy is stored in water flowing and in wind blowing. Water rotates a turbine's wheel and the wheel does work, grinding grain in the mill. Another example, the energy of wind and water turns into electric energy and is transmitted through the wires, so that work could be done somewhere else. Stored energy is also present in any fuel, gunpowder or petrol. Gunpowder burns down, combustion gases get out of the engine's nozzle and accelerate the rocket. Petrol burns inside car engine cylinders and pushes at the pistons. The pistons rotate the shaft, the car accelerates and moves along the road doing work overcoming friction and air resistance. Let's imagine that energy is stored in something like energy sandwiches. A robot, which has to lift heavy loads, feeds on such sandwiches. It eats up a sandwich and then lifts a single load to a single level. Three sandwiches will help to lift three loads to one level or one load to three levels. Some other combinations are also possible. But in all these cases, three units of energy will be consumed and by these means a robot will be able to do the same three-unit work. To do work, one doesn't have to lift loads upwards against gravity force. A load may be pulled horizontally against the force of friction or against medium resistance force. The formula for calculating work is clear now. We can write it down. Work is force multiplied by displacement. A unit of work is called a joule. One joule work is carried out by one newton force acting along one meter distance. This unit is named after a famous English scientist, James Joule. He was one of the discoverers of the energy conservation principle. The principle states that energy never disappears or appears out of nowhere, but keeps transforming from one type to another. Sloping planes, such as a gangway, a ramp or a footbridge have been used for lifting loads since ancient times. A staircase is also a sloping plane adjusted for walking. Lifting a load along an inclined surface, we apply a force which is noticeably smaller than the load's weight. Let us check if we can cut down on the work performed by using a sloping plane. Here's a load with two steel balls which may be lifted along a sloping plane almost with no friction. It weighs 7.2 Newton. We lift it vertically to the height of 25 centimeters and calculate the work we have done. 7.2 Newton multiplied by 0 0.25 meter equals 1.8 joule. Now we're going to lift the same load to the same height along a sloping plane. During the lifting, the force equals 2 newtons. It has noticeably decreased. The length of the sloping plane is 1 meter, which means the work we are doing equals 2 newtons multiplied by 1 meter, and that is 2 joules. We have gained in force by several times, but because of the increase of the distance, the work that we have done has slightly increased as well instead of decreasing. This happened because in this case, part of this work has been used not to lift the load, but to overcome the friction force.